rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for a sick and handicapped, recently departed from the military personnel of our community. Mr. Henderson? Here. Mr. Petrosella? Here. Mr. Gallarducci? Here. Mr. Colosimo? Here. Mr. Verducci? Here. Mrs. Schneider? Mr. Krzyzewski? Here. Mayor Copeland? Here. Solicitor McDermott? Here. Engineer Brett? Here. I'm Joe Power. Chief King? Here. Assistant Chief Maglin? Here. And Director Miller? Here. On that. Oh. Open it. They can hear you. Oh, open. Okay. Um, we have no one present that wants to speak from the, uh, the audience or the public. Anybody online that cares to address the council? Going once, twice, going to the regular agenda. Need a motion to approve the July 12, 2021 regular meeting minutes as submitted. So, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 I'll second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. I need a motion to approve the August 2021 bill minutes. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. I need a motion to approve the August 13th, 20th, 27th, September 3rd, and 10th, 2021 payrolls. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to adopt resolution number 2021-18, a resolution of the borough of Bridgeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, appointing a representative and an alternate to the governing board of the Chartres Valley District Flood Control Authority. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. I need a motion to adopt resolution number 2021-19, a resolution of the borough of Bridgeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, assuming responsibility for erecting, maintaining, and removing a temporary event banner over Route 50 for the Bridgeville South End Rotary Club Chili Cookout that is to be installed September 18, 2021, and removed October 18, 2021. I shall move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Should I abstain? Since I'm in the river? Yeah, I should. should. I'll abstain. Any, uh, anyone opposed? That motion carries. Any motion to authorize the solicitor to prepare an ordinance that would designate a no parking loading zone on Station Street for a distance of 26 feet west of the intersection with Taylor Way? Note that this area would be in front of 336 Station Street, Sandwich Screen House. I have a motion. Which is the, which the idea to do this? So, uh, I, I first, just, we all know what this is. Yeah, for some context, there was uh, some complaints that trucks couldn't get into the alleyway behind the yeah, hardware store I, I see because of parking. There. So there was complaints made, um, several, um, yeah, several, several complaints here. made. And this is eliminate the parking, full time parking, but allow for like unloading, unloading, yeah. and, and picking up stuff from Sammy's and that stuff. And for the record, Sammy, this has been discussed with Sammy's, and they are actually okay with it. We've gained some parking across the street um, behind the bank, and we got the meter parking up the country. So make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I need a motion to reject all offers that we received for the Warner Street stormwater slope stabilization and retaining wall improvement project. Uh, the bids were up on August 5th and came in way above what we had So no. Yeah. It's a shame that we got it to it. It's We have a motion by Bruce. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I need a motion to accept the resignation of Mr. Lars Lennon. Thank you. 
Planning Commission effective July 26, 2021. Sadly, I'll do it. second. Sadly, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can we send in a letter of thanks for all these things? We sorely missed. And we have an opening. So, anyone listening, if you're interested, uh, get a hold of Joe down here or any one of us and demonstrate your interest. So, it's an important thing to add on the website. For, uh, I did this week. Yeah. I need a motion to authorize a disbursement of $7,987.50 from the Capital Project Fund to LMR Excavating. LLC for partial payment number four and final in the Walk and Run Park Flood Improvements Project. I just have a move. So I have a second. So move. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? The motion carries. Need a motion to authorize a disbursement of $5,079.09 from the Seward Fund to Jet Jack Appropriate for partial payment number three and final in the Backwater Valve Contract Phase Three Project. Check. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the execution of change order number one and final for the back backwater valve contract phase three with Jet Jack Incorporated and resulting in a decrease of $16,218.20 based on final measurements of in place quantities and work performed. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the execution of change order number two and final for the Bower Hill Road Stormwater Improvements Project with Jet Jack Incorporated that resulted in an increase of $7,006.35 for additional paving along the frontage of Bower Hill Road and the final measurements of in place quantities. Note that the total cost of this project was $102,346. Forty-two cents, and we did receive a GEDF grant in the amount of hundred thousand dollars. So the borough share of this entire project was two thousand three hundred forty-six dollars and forty-two cents. And I'm sure, if I may, Mr. Chairman, that this change in order will be approved. Yes, sir. You did a nice job. Yeah, thank you. Sure. No, For all this house and that stuff, following the ground. That's all. I make a motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. I need a motion to deny the four requested change orders dated July 6, 2021, from Ready Site Development and Paving Company Incorporated for the Phase 2 of Lachlan Park Improvements Project as per the July 13, 2021 recommendation of the Borough Engineer. I'll move. For sure. I second that. I do have a question, uh, Joe. I know that. There's a lot of different bushes and things that weren't replaced and things like that, and that's why we're holding the money, is that correct? Yeah, there's a bunch list, and that's one of his requests. For a change order, is plants that were stored died, and he doesn't want to replace those. There's a couple of trees that he insisted he had put in, and he obviously did, and they died. Um, so we, it, it's on a bunch list. Uh, one of these is a discrepancy in measurement. He says he went 20 more feet of uh, guys yes. fencing in uh, uh, fencing. Uh, obviously, one picture was 200 feet by 220. It's been measured multiple times. They just want the other 20 feet. Um, so we reviewed each one of these. The punch list item, you can't be paid twice for something. He was paid to store the The only thing punch list remaining is the uh, bushes. Yes. And there's 17 bushes that. Really, are under warranty. It's rather simple. Mm -hmm. Replace them under a one year warranty, but he wants to pay for them again. Uh, is there a possibility that we won't have enough money, or we have plenty of money for that? We're, we're retaining that $16,000. Right. So there's a, a final pay request that we go into and basically he submits. Right. It's for sixteen grand. And, and he signed the final change order already, reducing quantities and closing out all the items. This came out of the fact. So. We planted the trees, you shouldn't have planted the trees. It was like the wrong time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but they've been replaced and the new ones took. So yeah. It's just a couple of bushes. It's rather simple. It's rather small. Yes. It's, it's rather simple. Okay. Thank you. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I need a motion to authorize the borough engineer to provide engineering services to develop permitting documents for submission to the Pennsylvania DEP for the proposed structures, park, playground improvements project at a cost not to exceed $8,500. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I need a motion to authorize the disbursements of the following real estate tax refunds as a result of changes in assessments. Number one, in year 2020, parcel 255-S-142 in the amount of $162.43 in Andrew Helper. Number two, in year 2019, parcel 255-S-142 in the amount of $130.58. Andrew Elper. And uh, number three, year 2020 parcel 254-E-328 for the amount of $68.90 from Michael and Kalina Diltz. Number four, year 2020 uh, parcel 254-N-18, the amount of $76.70 to Timothy and Julie Dunlap. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. I'd like to welcome our uh, county representative, Tom. Where do they meet him? I don't know. <laughs> you want to address us at some point? Uh, no, just, just come to, uh, it's good to be back. See everyone again. I appreciate you being here. No, no problem. Happy to be here. Um, number 16, I need a motion to accept and pay any commission due July 2021 real estate tax collector. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Get a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 2021 Treasurer's Report. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Get a motion to accept the July 2021 Police Report. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. We have added a, uh, an item to the agenda. Need a motion to authorize the second and final payout the amount of $65,284.73 to Youngblood Paving Incorporated for the 2021 Roadway Improvement Program. I shall move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. That just came in today, so we have an empty agenda. Thank you. Pardon? Well, appreciate it. Yeah, good. Okay, let's move on to committee reports. Um, administration, uh, Virginia Schneider is not here, so we'll pass on that. Um, finance, Joe Berdusky. Okay, uh, the budget uh, for 2022 is starting uh, to get underway this month. Um, we would actually like to have a finance committee meeting the last week of August. I know what we are trying to find those dates so if we can finalize that. Uh, in the near future, uh, please let myself and Joe know when a good time would be. Um, as far as the uh, fund balance, uh, part of the uh, discussions are going to be on the capital project fund uh, to make to decide on how we're going to handle uh, some of the surplus. So obviously, going toward some of the different projects that we have going. Uh, we are right on pace as far as uh, this time of the year, right before all the tax money comes in uh, for the 2021 budget to actual. Uh, we did receive a $10,000 grant that Senator Robinson helped us with uh, from Noble Environmental. Um, and uh, the flood uh, hazard mitigation grant, uh, I'm sure we'll get more into detail with that with Joe, but. Uh, we are underway in regards to seeing uh, the step two of 22, it seems like, but uh, uh, we're on our way to, to getting that done. Uh, as far as the Workers' Comp Safety Committee, they met and are on the final stages of being able to get uh, the borough approved for a 5% discount on the uh, firefighters policy that's uh, up for renewal in October, so that'll be a nice thing. Last but not least, the finance software uh, has been starting to uh, work in July, and there's still some bugs, but uh, things are going very smoothly with that. That's enough. 
Thanks, Joe. Any questions for Joe? Thanks. Uh, Parks and Rec, Joe Colosimo. Okay, <laughs> excuse me, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. A <clears throat> uh, couple of small ones, not the small ones, this one. Uh, right now, we're going to we have the um, Halloween parade scheduled for October 30th. Fire department's on board and trying to get CD bands for them. We're waiting on the time to see if we've got plenty of the band can for them. So, that's a good thing. Uh, we received a $10,000 grant from the Noble Environmental Company which is, I guess, the parent company in uh, County Hall. Uh, $10,000 rent for the uh, fitness trail down in Chartier Park. I went to thank County Hall and the Governor Robinson for helping out with this event. And last but not least, uh, I had a stern amount of data to check on the park for the rentals. And uh, that, as of a Friday, we had 61 rentals so far this year. Uh, we have still had in August, well, September. But the biggest thing in the last seven years is 2015, we had 71. So I think we're doing pretty good compared to the last few years or the COVID years. We're on the winter, we're really out there, and it's just as good. We're in some great shape. So that's all I have for now. Any questions for Joe? All right, thanks, Joe. Okay. Public works, you know. I'll uh, take you with Jim Bitchley. You got the report. I uh, I want to make a comment on that ramp for uh, Janeway. Uh, I, I think it's a wonderful job. That would be a big, big, big help. That's the entire paragraph here. If you want to third paragraph, it's all uh, very extremely good. The patch. Uh, on Barrio Road and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very interesting, uh, busy uh, month, and a lot of the good things happen. Uh, all of your big favor for the uh, for for uh, for our president, and uh, that's all I can say. Probably going to do a good job, and with the engineers, some of these things, a lot of these things. So very pleased with it. Thank you. Any questions for you? Thanks, Ned. Public safety, Bruce Gallagher. Yes. The only thing I have to report, uh, Mr. President, is the Civil Service Board met last Wednesday evening to extend the uh, police officers uh, list for another year uh, with the expectation of one officer retiring after the first of the year. So we extended it, and there's two names that are left on the list. So Next year we'll have to look at uh, going to another list, but at this time uh, we have somebody who wants uh, to also be part of this. That's all I have. Any questions, Bruce? Good. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate it. Uh, Mayor, any comments? No report. Thanks, Mayor. Please, Chief, Jack Kim. No report. Thank you, Chief. Solicitor, so I'm there. Thank you. I don't have anything to add. Any questions for the solicitor? Royal Engineer, Kevin Bray. Uh, we did provide our uh, written report uh, dated August 5th. Um, just a couple comments uh, on the report. On the wall, we did have nine contractors request uh, specs. Uh, six bid. We got a good turnout on the bids. I'm talking with contractors. Uh, steel prices are up tremendously. Um, balls are odd, odd projects. Uh, we often have to bid them multiple times until uh, we hit the right timing, kind of the right pace as far as material cost. This is an odd one because you have the railroad, you have utility poles that need help, and you have um, utilities in an alleyway to protect. Um, so we need contractors that uh, need uh, work more than one piece of Obviously, did the spread in the bids to give you an idea was six hundred thousand dollars. So when you go from low to high with the six hundred, we 
your road bids um, in the area, they may vary between low and high by maybe 10%. This area will vary by 100%. So, you know, there's a pretty big gap um, between the bids. Um, I won't lose faith, though, that you're not going to get a bid that's in on, online. We may tweak a few things, though, just because of timing. If the wall gets built over the winter, um, we could bid the paving work with next year's paving to take that out of this contract because everybody that did it, other than uh, independent, doesn't do it. So that may be a way to save fifty thousand dollars. So uh, there's a few things like that will work with the show timing. I would put this out for the January. Let's watch steel prices for a little bit and see. Still right now is the highest since since two thousand and eight. I heard the other day, um, just before the crash. Uh, and then it can bounce dramatically uh, the way down the uh, So um, and we don't want an economic crash, obviously, but hopefully steel straightens out a little bit. You just can't get it right now, as well. Even if you can afford steel, uh, you just cannot get it in on anything. Uh, and that's why the liberals are going to fall right now and make the best of it. So uh, we'll watch it over the next four months. And when the time is right, we'll put it back out in the field. So, um, in reality, it wouldn't have been able to be done until next spring. <clears throat> Anyway, yes, it would have been probably 14, 16 weeks just to get the steel in, so we're probably not really losing any time. Uh, lumber was similar three or four months ago. You couldn't get anything in now. You got 84, you got a Home Depot. The stacks are getting bigger and bigger, so once that happens, the price is going to go back. So, um, any other questions on the memo? A bunch of the construction projects got completed, which was good. The program got buttoned up other than one. On the um, the grant that got denied, is there any way that we could change it for to possibly, possibly be considered one rat and put it in reapplying for one? Yeah, I think all grants this year um, we tweak them a little bit and resubmit them because um, I expect the grants to get a lot of funding over the next twelve months. Some are two, two years ago. Well, I spoke to Jason Ortiz guy. That's, he was encouraging it for that reason. And Joe and I were thinking, well, what else could we do? But this may be our core cool opportunity. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll tweak it for um, talk a little more about how this is going to help not slide onto the railroad for transportation as well as protecting the companies. Um, not just for retaining the road. Because the way the last one went in kind of talks a lot about the cane uh, in the roads, maybe we'll include it to kind of protect the transportation network, something like that. So we can work on the wording a little bit there. But I do think it's going to be a better year again for this one. When, when are those GDF grants due? Are they due soon? Uh, the next round should be coming up. It should be opening soon. It hasn't opened yet. Oh, so, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it should be open in November. I, so, I, I think it's going Sooner. Yeah, so, I think that. so. If that's the case, this may be a, a good thing. This will be our fourth time submitting for Warner Avenue. So, yeah. and we've got another one that were more pressing. Now, Warner. Um, and, and, and we're on an issue, though. When we budgeted three hundred seventy-five thousand for this project. Uh, Lowest bids at almost so seven hundred thousand dollars. It, it's not within our means. So, if this is an avenue that we could. Up with those engineering estimates for grant applications, so that maybe that's a, this is a lifeline. So that's all I'm thinking. Yes. Yep. Um, and then I did hand out, I'll do this quickly, uh, the MS4 train. Um, uh, came out of the packet. I went through a couple of the slides, not all. Um, for MS4s, you obviously do have an MS4 uh, permit. You've had one for years. Uh, because you have separate storm sewer and sanitary sewer. Uh, this is your storm sewer permit. Um, on page two, uh, it lists out the MCMs one through six. Uh, once you have a written plan on how you address each one of them. Uh, MCM one on page three is your public education, outreach, um, things like this evening, uh, training in the public. Uh, number two is public involvement. Uh, obviously, in the last 18 months, Public involvement is very difficult. Um, most of the communities, you know, they had uh, community days, things like that. They would talk about stormwater, and you know, pamphlets. Well, last year, none of the community days really happened. So um, we'll check back up on that over the next year. 
Um, next is MCM number three, illicit discharge, detection, and elimination. That's for your outfalls and with the stream. Uh, they get tested 20% uh, per year over a period of um, uh, five years, and those results get sent in uh, every year. Uh, construction site runoff, uh, that's your building permit items. Uh, you make sure everybody has ENS on their own, uh, building renovations, things like that. Uh, number five, MCM number five on page four is post construction. If somebody would do a parking lot expansion, they may put a rain garden in, do something to treat the water as it comes off the parking lot before it gets released into the stream. And the last one is MCM number six, which is your uh, pollution prevention, good housekeeping, and that's your facilities, that's your parks, that is your uh, car building here, your uh, police garage, things like that. And it's how you store everything. It's how you still store salt, oil, uh, anything that you do your daily activities. You may have a written plan for that as well. Uh, your annual report is due September 30th. Uh, we will have it prepared and it will be submitted. They do have a $500 renewal fee every year now. It used to be every five years now, it's every year. Um, DEP inspections, um, the ones from 2018 to today are back underway. Um, the difference between now and uh, five years ago is you get uh, about a day or two notice from the EP, and then they come in. Um, we have a bunch of communities that are getting inspected over the summer here now. Um, John Lewinsky from our office will come out and do a walk, uh, walk through, uh, check the paperwork, and do a quick review of the garage to make sure everything's in order. Um, because we do expect, if you haven't been inspected yet, and I can't remember if you were before COVID hit. I don't think you were. Um, that you'll be inspected sometime over the next year. And again, it's just time. We used to get a month to come out and make sure it's okay. The last three that were done in the last two weeks, we got two days. So we had to go pick up everybody's binders, make sure everything's in there, and then meet the public personal with through the garage and tidy up. Uh, they've been fine. Um, they just have a checklist they go through. But um, we still want to make sure. So um, they have to have them done by 2023, this permit cycle. So that's why we know if you haven't been done, you're going to get done. Um, so we want to make sure we're up to date on that. Um, next is PRPs. You do have a permit um, that was issued 18. It has a pollution reduction plan. You uh, receive a grant to put in the uh, oil or grid separators. Um, they call them storm scepters um, to remove trash, things like that from the storm water. Um, you have a couple locations you're putting those in. You remember when a couple years ago we reviewed your plan. One of the things that your plan has is you have a street sweep and you have to have a $400,000 street sweeper. Um, we're, we're going to get your plan switched to do some more of these that are structural and not do the $400,000 street sweeper because you have to weigh the uh, product and it's impossible to pick up the amount that's in the PRP plan as it exists. Uh, 2023 application, you have to do another PRP update. Um, they will be structural elements and street sweeping. Although I highly recommend it, it keeps the town clean, it picks up trash. It's a good BMP, it's just not a good PRP because it costs too much money. Um, the same way with uh, cleaning cash bases, people include that. If you clean out a cash base, you have to wait and prove the amount you took credit for it. Yeah. It's the only two things you have to wait. Everything else is. Um, build it at a percentage of reduction you get credit for it. And we just do an as and then it's done and we move to the next year. When you do street sweeping or cash basically, you have to actually prove that um, you've got that much of a terrible walk, and that's nearly impossible. So, um, we will work with uh, Joe to get that tweet. And then we're working right now to come up with some good suggestions um, on what being needs to build and where. So we'll be back to um, work with that. Um, any questions on that? Hopefully that wasn't good enough. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Any questions for you? Yeah. All right, Mark, she's great. Uh, we got Mike here, right? Yeah. Um, from the last month, we had 51 calls. I want to remind the uh, public that on Thursdays, we have food trucks. Uh, check our Facebook page. Our sign is currently getting worked on. I think mean, there's one or two last little things. Parts were kind of tricky to come by, that's why it's been down. So I think it's been working on Thursdays and whatnot. 
So check the sign, check our Facebook page, and come down and support food truck and the fire department. Any questions for Mike? Top review, Ms. We are watching the Delta variant with COVID. Um, we have seen a significant uptick in patients that are experiencing symptoms and testing positive. Um, we've even had two of our own employees. We, we skated out pretty much the whole year without anything, and then within the last month, we've had two employees test positive for the Delta variant, and they were both vaccinated. So. Um, it's it's pretty wicked, so I would uh, be safe out there because it, it, it is it is happening. Um, <clears throat> another thing uh, for EMS is we uh, killed a truck. Uh, we had a catastrophic failure in one of our ambulances, so we uh, had to do an immediate replace, uh, and find a new one to replace it. So that kind of added some financial debt to the service that we weren't anticipating, um, but uh, we did. Uh, find one, so we were lucky enough to stumble across that and try to buy a new car or used car lately. There's nothing out there, uh, but we did uh, luck upon one, so we are going to get that one put in service so that service to Bridgeville is you know, sustained and uninterrupted and keep going forward. But, uh, just a note to the board those ambulances are $200,000 these days, so we're running three to four of them, so it's uh, quite, quite an expense. That's all I have. Uh, thanks, Dan. Any questions for Dan? Okay, do we have a historical business center report? Yep. Uh, Ridgeville Library. Here. Oh. Ridgeville Park before you represent it. Here. Planning Commission. Um, I'll be real quick. Uh, I just like on behalf of the Planning Commission. Uh, thank Mr. Lennon for all his time on the planning commission. As you all know, he's a maybe really hard to replace uh, in that position. Um, Justine did a report. I pass it out. You guys all have Justine report. Um, the gist of the meeting that we just had was our engineers presented, uh, updated all the flood projects that uh, that Bridgeville's been doing and where they stand and the effect. And then also going over our, or their flood mitigation plan for the block on, um, block on run, there was basically uh, three different options, and each option had three phases. And phase one is basically the same across the board, and we are recommending that, which I see on your agenda, that you uh, proceed with phase one of, of the options. We need a motion to approve it. Um, they made a motion to recommend to council that we proceed with implementing the seeking grant funding. We we need a motion to but I think tonight was on our agenda basically if we received that and directed our engineer and myself to seek grant money. Okay. Or saying if we don't like that. Any questions for Mike? Okay, Borough Manager uh, Pexman, Borough Manager Joe Cowan. Uh, a couple things. As uh, Councilman Perducci said, the borough was awarded about $1.2 million in a FEMA hazard mitigation grant for buyout of eight properties on Baldwin and Margaret Street. We received notice back on uh, July 13th, so coincidentally, uh, right after the last flood. It would have been nice to have that news a week earlier, but we got it the week after. Uh, with that, uh, we've been working with FEMA and FEMA to get all the contracts taken care of so that we can proceed rapidly with it. They tell us we're about three to five months out before we can start acquiring properties through the project. Uh, we did have a number of uh, residential properties that are pretty much already completed, so we're working with our people with liaison. We've already sent offer letters to those eight properties saying, hey, you were provided with an appraisal in 2019 based off of an appraised value on your property pre-flood in 2018, uh, and there was a set value for each property that the grant was awarded on. Those eight properties received their offer letters, and they had two weeks uh, to make a decision and respond back to us on how they want to proceed. So hopefully when we come back to you next month, we'll have an update on how many people are in the program and how many are out. Uh, to date of the eight, uh, I have received confirmation back from three of them saying that they're going to participate. The ninth property, which is the Italian Club building, 
uh, is under historic review, uh, mainly because of uh, the social club status. Uh, it wasn't along the architecture of the building because of the background of the building. Uh, while that's going on, uh, an appraisal is being completed of that building that we should have within the week. Uh, once that gets that appraisal done, that gets sent to FEMA, uh, and then we'll get their graces if we want to, if that matches what they were in line with the grant, to present an offer to the Italian club to go forward with that project. Uh, that funding for the Italian club is separate from the $1.2 million, so we don't hold up the eight residential properties. Uh, our PMO liaison separated that project, so it would be like a phase 1A kind of deal grant application. So. Uh, while that property is going through historical review, uh, the grant application is still pending. So to, just to ask a question, so if somebody steps away from the program or, and there was somebody interested in that, do you have to start all over or can a property be replaced by the one that decided not to? I think it's specific on the property set within the original application. So it, it is, if that's the case, it's rather disheartening because there's a number of people who didn't want to get on board the first time around, and now that it funded, they're calling saying, hey, we'd like to participate. And I'm saying, I'm sorry, we have to make a, another application. And that application either is twofold. One, when the next time there's another declared disaster that reaches the threshold that makes it eligible, like we have for the 2018 event, or it's a very competitive grant application you're competing against everyone in the country. So that, that's really where we're at. But I think that's a good question. I say, yeah, let's see where we're at two weeks from now, and then we'll go from there. But my first conversation with our FEMA representative is this specific to the properties that were in the original application. Because if you look at the original application, the numbers that are in there that are awarded for each property or the appraisals we had done in 2019. It is very specific. Uh, secondly, the roof project on Borough Building is complete, so it's nice and uh, no more leaks. Uh, a couple little issues, like you can see around the building, that when you get to this past winter, painting will be done, you know, this winter, like the back stairway, now that the roof isn't leaking, and in here, so uh, we're all buttoned up, that project's complete. Uh, the back channel, there was a number of work completed in the back channel recently, as it was brought up in the past planning commission and council meetings, uh, we're being very diligent and proactive in keeping up on that. Uh, it isn't do it once and forget about it. Uh, after the July 7th flood, a lot of number of large gravel bars reformed in our permit areas at the confluences of Painter's Run, Emma Block, and Run Creeks. Uh, Public Works were very diligent the past two weeks, removed all that sediment, so they're all wide open. So our guys know, I, I know I'm going to pay on your side, but we're going to do this two, three times a year, and we're going to get it And if they understand. Uh, we had our household hazardous waste collection event over the weekend. It was pretty successful. 227 people participated with 22,000 tons of hazardous waste, um, probably recycled and disposed of. Stand over it, yeah. And it was just on Saturday. Oh, so okay. it was a it was really successful event in, in a while. So it was really good, and I thank everyone um, for participating. Is that Any questions for Joe? Under new business, we uh, we have on the agenda in the bottom run a flood control plan recommendation from the planning commission to proceed with phase one of the long term plan. Uh, is everyone familiar with phase one of the plan? Um, Councilor, I think everyone's familiar with it. Um, what do we need to do? we need in it? I th I think what it comes down to just so uh, like for the record, phase one was in essence from McLaughlin Run at the back channel all the way up to the culverts behind Gary Delight. Uh, the engineer's plan that was presented very thoroughly at the planning commission meeting uh, proposes a, uh, a levee wall, which was basically what's proposed for Warner Avenue, steel beam and yeah. concrete. Well, that leg and wall. Yeah, soldier beam and levee. Yes. Uh, wall. Yeah, it's pretty nice yeah. there in the light there. Uh, yeah, which one does come through? Yeah. Still that's probably in that and screw pumps on that existing storage system. Lift the water from the drain and into the uh, stream. I would like to make a motion and to be approved with the idea and uh, time will tell whenever we get done. I think what it comes down to, if the consensus of borough council is that we move forward with phase one upon the recommendation yeah. of the engineer and planning commission, that we get aggressive seeking grant funding. I think right. it's something that 
in a couple of years, we can sure. keep to it. I, I think it's going to be possible. Yeah, I'm going to send in a uh, service leader for the department uh, for the project because this is going to fall into one of the categories that Michelle already. If there's grants that become available in this year's infrastructure funding, uh, you want to have a project that is approved uh, by Army Corps DP. This isn't one of those that's a uh, two month review. This is similar to the trash rack. Um, it's going to involve everybody, including the Army Corps for phase one. Um, that being the case, with the new bugs and money, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the checklist that we have to do. We're going to give you that proposal so you can see it. Uh, it's budget time, so you can see it next year. We can get that into queue because uh, the next two years is going to be critical as far as uh, grant funding that comes to This is one of those, those types. So um, it may even be an earmark to the project in the federal budget. And if we get all the planning done, we have a good construction estimate, we have the permitting done, uh, similar to the Baldwin Street FEMA project. Yeah, that's a substantial grant. That program would fund projects similar to this. Correct. So we're yeah. on the radar. We can't uh, we can proceed with the grant unless if we approve it. You need a plan. And this is accepting the plan. Yeah. Well the motion, I made a motion. I'll second. We have a motion to proceed with the pouring of Grants, grants for phase one of the uh, project presented by the engineer. And we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion passed. Thanks. We'll be looking forward to that. Okay. Uh, one other thing on a new business I have, and I uh, wanted to congratulate Mayor Copeland for being named the Pennsylvania Mayor of the Year. Well deserved, and you represent our community with grace. And uh, we appreciate everything that you do. And we will celebrate in the future when all of our council is here. We, we held up this month to make sure that everybody can participate. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for making me look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I didn't say any more new business. <laughs> there was nothing written down here. Very important, the Rotary of Bridgeville South Bed is having their annual chili cook-off. Uh, that's why we did the sign approval. Uh, we are moving forward and it will be October 17th from 12 to 4. No, there is not a Steeler game at that time. So, uh, there's a reason why we do it that day. But uh, looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be a great we had 35 chilies last year. We're looking to beat that. Two years ago, so, 35. We had no chilies last year. <laughs> well, we didn't have any chilies last year. No chilies last, last year. Two years ago, we had chilies. 35 chilies. So we're looking to break the record and uh, have a really, really nice time. So. I just want to go on record to one more thing real quick. Um, I've been going to all the park authority meetings recently. And uh, a little disappointed that they're not here again. Uh, like that we on the record that they want to increase their transparency and their accountability with us. We have with them. So I appreciate them doing the same. Anything else on their new business? With that, I'll accept the motion of the Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye.